That's a big question. Don't know. It's a very big question. But um, you know, Trumbull Rinpoche imparted many uh, teaching streams or bodies of teaching, complete bodies of teaching, and. Uh, you know, obviously the Buddha Dharma and Shambhala are two that we're very familiar with. The Dharma art was something that Trungpa Rinpoche, there's an entire body of teachings uh, that he imparted. Um, some of it pretty sophisticated, um, obviously. Um, I personally am not someone who has studied the Dharma art uh, teachings at their depth, and there are many people in the community who have. Uh, but it included everything from poetry writing to flower arrangement to uh, body intensification exercises to uh, uh, dance, calligraphy, you know. And uh, I, there are people, uh, at, particularly at Naropa University, that could probably answer that question a lot better than I can. Uh, but the core of Dharma art, as I recall the teachings and as they sit inside my heart, so to speak, is that the core of it is not aggression. It's this quality of, of elegance, natural elegance that human beings have that uh, comes to full fruition when we are able to overcome aggression. And, um, uh, and it's also about, uh, you know, one of the phrases that was very common is the art in everyday life is that um, a Dharma artist, so to speak, is, is it's mostly about how you conduct yourself in your life and express your natural sense of creativity and, and elegance. And it could be just as simple as how you set a table or as profound as you know, being an architect and designing you know, a city. Uh, from the point of view of Dharma art, they're equally important. The Dharma art is, is really, first and foremost, a, a, a stance. It's, it's how we enter into the creative process. Um, and the core of it is not aggression. You know, when we think of aggression, we think of war and stuff, you know, and, and that's fair because it is aggression. But this is more about being open to the process um, uh, with a, a, um, kind of a genuine curiosity. Um, and and it's, it's, it's kind of letting your creativity dance with the phenomenal world, you know? Now, how we want to dance with the phenomenal world, we could do it with photography, painting, dance, um, even as you set your table. Again, it's, uh, of course, Dharma art, uh, it's not so much replicate, can it inform? Can it inform the way we conduct ourselves um, creatively? Absolutely. No, without a doubt. And it has to do with cultivating a mind of non-aggression, which is uh, cheerful, playful, you know, creative. There's not that much difference in a certain sense, because what Dharma art, what Dharma art recognizes is that human beings are inherently beautiful or inherently creative are inherently elegant. That you know, all you have to do is look at any human being. And even the littlest little kid wants to paint their fingernails. You know what I mean? There, there's, a, there's a natural tendency for us to be beautiful. So this tendency of human beings to be beautiful, to express elegance, uh, is, is what it is. It's beautiful. And um, the, the, the difference between Dharma art and conventional art is in conventional mind, we tend to monumentalize our creativity. We tend to over amplify, make a big deal out of it. I mean, they just sold Picasso's painting for like, a, I think it was $174 million. Yeah, I love Picasso. $174 million? Yeah, please. You know, we tend to over, we, the non-aggression of Dharma art is the ability to express your creativity and also disown it. To be free in your creative expression and to uh, offer it as a gift to others in the world so as to create an inspired and uplifted world. 
Um, and human beings have a tendency to do that. If, if, and, and if we just kind of get our aggression out of the way, I think we could really do a great job at it as human beings. <laughs>
and seeing the vastness of being on this planet. Just even if it comes down, we, we were photographing little strings on the street. Just the how a string fell, you know. So this ability to be profoundly sensitive in a conversation with your world is really the essence of art. So it isn't so much is Dharma art spreading, it's is there a conversation between this contemplative understanding of human creative expression and the day-to-day, -day, frankly, struggles of artists, you know, and, and struggles of ordinary folks who don't consider themselves artists but want to creatively express themselves. Is, this con is the contemplative insight beginning to inform that? And I would say yes, you know. It was a long answer to a short question. <laughs>